All right, welcome to another episode of Camping Corner, week eight. Week eight, we are on episode eight, and uh, we're ready to rock and roll. Of course, my name's Tony. I'm Mallory. And you're watching Camping Corner. That's right. So, first we're going to start with Around the Web. Got a couple awesome things uh, from from uh, off the interwebs this week that were kind of cool. We are 14 days away from spring, mm -hmm. which means we are roughly 174,000 days from camping season. Because <laughs> it's supposed to snow um, tomorrow. It's a bad word. You can't talk about it. It's like 57 degrees today. It's supposed to snow tomorrow. Ugh. Well, so to get us in the spirit of camping, though, the first one that we have is sitting around a campfire with people with that special talent of the camp smoke that just follows yeah, you. Yeah, no matter where they go. And then you, everybody's got that one friend that you're like, dude, go stand someplace else. <laughs> the smoke follows you every place you go. I feel like I am that friend. Really? Yeah, that's me. Yeah. 100%. They say smoke follows beauty. Oh, I like that. We're rolling with that next time. Okie doke. <laughs> hey, the other one was uh, some cool camping rules. Watch the sunset, wait for the stars, make memories, eat s'mores, relax and unwind, laugh, take a nap, uh, sit by the fire. There's something missing. Have a drink. Oh. Have a cocktail. We need to add have <laughs> a cocktail. Because if you have that, eat s'mores and take a nap, I'm good. Perfect. Have a cocktail. <laughs> so we've got some great things going on. We've uh, this week we also saw the um, uh, everyone needs someone uh, who will call them and say, "Pack your stuff. We're going camping." That would make me happy. That would make me super happy. I know uh, my wife and her friend Sarah on a daily basis are talking back and forth about how many days till the campground opens. How many days? Um, April 11th, the campground opens. Mm -hmm. I'm relatively sure that we're going to be ready to camp April 11th. Yeah. It may be snowing. So far, our first camp tri camping trip is April 17th, which is late for us. Nice. So. Not not nice that it's late right. for you, but nice that you've got it planned. So hey, do you guys have uh, do you have your your camp uh, your first camp trip planned? Are you, you know, do you already have a plan? Where are you going? When are you going? Are you going for spring break? Are you just chomping at the bit waiting for your campground to open? Hey, hit us up. Let us know. Yeah, definitely. We like to talk about stuff like that. Uh, and it makes us jealous. <laughs> it really does, actually. Absolutely. So send that stuff in to us. We also got, if you watched last week's episode, we talked about uh, some silly things as far as recipes and things like that. Mm -hmm. We absolutely got inundated with responses. That is super awesome. We're super stoked that you guys are watching the episodes and having a good time. And we got some great things. We uh, we have a top fan already. Ooh, that's exciting. I don't know how you become a top fan, but Amy Alter, you are our top fan. Bing, ding, 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 ding. Confetti's falling from the sky. <laughs> Woo! You know what you win? You get to be the top fan. You're it. <laughs> But we got some great responses. We did. So, of course, we asked, what is your favorite camp recipe? So, like Tony said, we got some really great responses. Um, Christy, we love to make our own pizza night with the kids. We bring tons of toppings, and the kids have a blast making their own. Then we cook them over the fire. Nothing beats wood-smoked pizza. I've never done that. I'm I, going to. Yeah. I, the parts store has those little pizza ovens, and I've thought about buying one. Yeah. You know, and, and cooking my own pizza, but... I, uni. An uni? That's what they're called, uni. 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 Dan, our producer, says it's called an uni. Uni. Does Dan have an uni? Dan doesn't have an uni. Dan <laughs> needs to help us get an, an uni. We need to try one out. Live on air. How great would that be? Taste testers. We can Absolutely. Make, we can make that happen. We can make that happen. We'll do it. Dan says we can make it happen. Make sure you put in the comments, Dan, make it happen. <laughs> So our top, our number one top fan, Amy Alter, we love foil packs. Uh, we always called them hobos when I was growing mm -hmm. up. And you take your aluminum foil and put all your stuff in there. Yep. And then just throw it directly on the fire and cook all that stuff. So she talked about pork burgers with onions and potatoes. Um, we're also going to need, when you schedule your time at the campground um, at Walnut Ridge, 
we're going to need you to let us know what campsite and exactly what date you're going to be there because we're going to come visit we're going to come visit <laughs> we're hungry and patty agrees with the you know what you call the hobo meals and yeah the foil packets and then ron ronald shepherd uh gosh loving uh shish kebabs over an open fire super easy and everything t- tastes better uh cooked over an open fire which I absolutely agree with, and he sent a great picture of some stuff that he's got cooking right directly over the fire. His shish kebabs looks like maybe some vegetables and some overflow meat over on the aluminum foil. So super cool, guys. Keep those things coming. That's he's a top, he's a top fan too. He is a top fan Ooh, too. Ron, Ronald's and, a top fan. Woo, him and Christy. Woohoo! We need to we need to get Dan to send them something. Or was it Christy? It was Amy. My bad. Oh, Amy. My Christy, bad, Amy. Christy, post more so you can be a top fan too. We don't know how to make you a top fan, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> Not very techy. Nope, me neither. Sorry. Okay, so also our service manager talked about the RV seal maintenance in our last service video. So we had several of our Facebook followers ask some questions. Um, so before we highlight those, let's watch what Josh said again about the seal maintenance. So Take it away, Josh. Hey everybody, it's Josh Walnut Ridge. I talk a lot about maintenance and I'm going to do it again this time uh, because it is very important. We have a 2016 Puma that uh, Ryan's working on here that I advise to guess I would say they've not done any maintenance on this so far. Just by looking at it, you can't really see any signs of where they've resealed anything. But I wanted to show you why it's important to, to really inspect these things and keep them clean because some of this stuff you might not see, but like if we kind of, we can kind of zoom in close on some of these spots, like this is opened up right here. And then like pretty much all the way down this rail, there's some little spots, this decal kind of hides it here. When you get, when you get down a little bit lower, like right here, it's actually opened up a little bit. And then just all the way down, and then when we get down here, it looks like it's sealed good, but actually the outside edge of this silicone has, has lost that bond with the metal on this. And so, especially on a corner like this, that water's gonna run in and it, it'll start soaking in the wood. And on these metal units, these thick and thin ones like this, you may not notice the damage quite as fast because the fiberglass ones will, will start to uh, delaminate and you'll get those kind of bubbles showing up in it. But these metal units, you're not necessarily gonna see anything uh, until it actually penetrates to the wallboard inside where you start getting that musty smell. So um, it's, it's why it's important actually to clean these as well so you can see some of these spots. But if we go on around this, there's there's several spots that he's gonna hit around the windows and like the entry door and stuff. That's it's pretty important. A lot of times we'll get like right down at the bottom of these windows. You won't, you won't have a uh, very good ceiling on there, especially if there's a decal. Um, that's running into it where they've cut off. Sometimes that decal can kind of peel loose and the sealant not stick there. Um, so it's a good place for water to penetrate there. We actually have quite a bit on this front corner as well. Like all of this silicone down at the bottom of this is just completely gone. Um, it's not adhering to this anymore. And now this is getting close to your floor line, which is gonna be basically right here. So that water's gonna penetrate in and start soaking in the floor. Um, things like around these lights this this lens right here doesn't necessarily have to be sealed but you can see like the silicone's gone so if it's falling off there it's going to fall off you know in other places it's up next to the unit as well i'm not real sure about the roof on this way i actually haven't even looked at it this we just found a lot of spots just on the outside of this but uh with the same thing like this this silicone right here you can see this kind of the edge of that is not adhered to the metal anymore so it's gonna allow water to get in there. We have the same thing all the way down this corner. Water's gonna be able to get in. And then we noticed, uh, it was on the back, right, Ryan? Very back of this, yeah, oh, right here. Yeah. So we have the, the fridge, uh, the, the outside access to the fridge, and then down here in the bottom, this, there, there's nothing here. There's, there's no sealant down at the bottom of this at all which sometimes is not necessarily a place for, for water to get in down at the bottom. Like a lot of times on the windows, they don't put any silicone on the bottom of them. But, but right here, it kind of goes up this corner. And if you had a good heavy rain, our water's gonna run down and it's, it, it'll kind of, I mean, if you ever watch rain, like 
kind of running under stuff, it'll it'll get enough to where it can seep in behind this metal and start rotting out under the floor of the fridge, which you're not going to see that from inside because this fridge cabinet is pretty deep and, and where this is sitting all on top, there's there's no access for you to get to it except for doing an inspection on this stuff. So very important. One other spot. This is why it's important to clean them too so that you can see these areas. You can see here like a black streak's coming down off the window. So we know this is a heavy area for the rain to drain right here, probably coming off slide topper. Um, we haven't even opened the slides yet to look and see what all needs to be there. But you can see right in here on top of this uh, compartment door, kind of green, little, little moldy uh, growing on there because the water is coming down here and sitting on here. So if, if this seal, which fortunately for, for this spot, this seal is actually good so it's been able to hold that water out. But if it was like any of these other spots, that water would be soaking right in there. And then we might be replacing the slide floor, which we've done a lot of this year. It's had some rotted out slide floors. So a couple of things. Need to get your maintenance done. Spot check these seals. Um, it, it needs to be done a couple of times a year at least. If it were me, I would probably do it monthly. You know, after every couple of trips, just do a quick walk around at least to look for some, some obvious areas. But also, keeping it clean. Uh, keep those black streaks off, keep the, the dirt and stuff from building up in these areas so you can actually see where the holes in the ceiling is and where that stuff's penetrating. Um, that's gonna allow you to, uh, to, to make that coach last a lot longer for you to camp in. So hopefully this helps. Get out there and check your units. All right, so here are some of those questions that, that we received from Josh's video. Robert Dexter Frederick, what do you use to reseal it? Anything better than silicone? So the response was generally on the sides, it is just silicone. We would use the same sealant as what the factory did originally. Some of the manufacturers use Sikaflex or Alpha. We also got a question from Amy. Uh, if you're putting, uh, putting your, not putting your unit in storage for the winter, do you recommend covering it with a tarp? We've heard both yes and no. Mm -hmm. So again, response, I wouldn't use a tarp. Tarps aren't breathable and tying them down can damage the unit when the wind picks up. I would suggest a breathable cover designed for RVs that is cinched tight under the unit, which is definitely what we've been told. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want it flapping around and mm -hmm. you also don't want it to, to catch moisture like using a plastic tarp or anything like that. And then when you take it off, you got a Petri dish of yeah. coronavirus, <laughs> COVID-19, <laughs> flu bug virus, oh my goodness. Ebola, E. coli, something growing on the side it's of the coach. Just coke. accumulating everything <laughs> there. You got it all. <laughs> Campers don't get sick. That's the cool thing. It's probably because we're around all that stuff. <laughs> all right. Russell asked, if while doing the inspection of sealant, you locate an area where the sealant has released from the surface, it is advisable, is it advisable to remove a portion of the sealant before applying a new sealant? And our response was, hey Russell, it would be the best to remove as much of the loose sealant as you possibly can. Uh, however, it's not always easy to, to remove that sealant, but even if you don't get it all off there, putting something over that to seal it back up is better than not doing anything at all. more so logan you mentioned keeping your unit clean how would you suggest washing it regular garden hose is a low pressure pressure washer okay and we got a response from the service department being we use brushes that we sell in the store uh, and a regular garden hose we also recently added the wash bot uh, which is super cool mm -hmm. uh, to our facility uh, which is like a mobile car wash except it's big and giant for the rvs hopefully hopefully you guys have seen the video if you haven't search back through and watch it it's super cool i was watching it the other day it's kind of mesmerizing um, if you are going to use a pressure washer though, make sure it's on low pressure and be careful around the decals. You don't want to peel the decals off the side of the unit. Yes, exactly. All right. So we have a couple more full-time RVers. I love these stories. So this is Jennifer and Savan. Um, the couple is living their dream, traveling full-time in their RV with their two rescued pups. So they do a really cool system. Mm -hmm. They work mm -hmm. in the summer months. Uh, one of them works in uh, property management and the other works in construction. Okay. And they, they do that in Ohio. Mm -hmm. So then when it starts to get cold and there's not need for their, you know, 
the property management and the construction slows down, they travel. Ooh. And they travel with two little fur babies. Two Boston Terrier mix rescue pups. Oh, I bet they're adorable. I bet they are. They didn't. We don't have a picture of the Boston Terriers though. All right, guys, we need a picture of your dog. Send, send pictures of your dog. Send tons of pictures. Everybody, if you travel with a pet, a feral monkey, an attack dog, oh! Oh! or fainting goats, goats, anything like that, and you've got them in the campground, if you dress them up for the holidays, the 4th of July, Easter, anything like that, send us the pictures, guys. We love seeing stuff like that, and we'll share them. Exactly. So speaking of pictures... We've got some really cool ones of this retro I Love Lucy inspired RV reno. So take a look at those. That's you, pretty awesome. Do you know who I Love Lucy was? Um, I do. Okay. I do. <laughs> For those of you that don't, great show. Check it out. You can find it on classic TV shows. Was it that picture with the fellow where he's used on his knees? No, no. But super cool. They sent some before and after pictures. Um, put really great colors in there. It's mm -hmm. bright. It's airy. The I'm not exactly sure. There's a pink tub. I don't know if they just painted the tub mm. or yeah. what they did. But also notice, did you notice that the microwave, the stove, and the range hood are all this light blue color exactly. with like a seafoam green around it and some pink? Looks like the refrigerator was, is blue too. So... Super cool. Love the flamingos in the background. Got some flamingos in the background. My wife and I have got a five foot tall metal flamingo to put in the campground this year. <laughs> and we're going to decorate the flamingo. His name is Fernando. Fernando's as tall as me. And Fernando is going to get decorated for the holidays. So he'll have like different clothes on for the year. My wife's going to have to sew. Is she thrilled about that? Um, I, I don't know. I haven't told her yet, but she's going to have to. If not, Surprise, if, yeah. guess what? Fourth of July is coming. We need, we need a costume for Fernando. Oh, my goodness. All right, so I know we just talked about the I Love Lucy reno. So this week in What's the Buzz? So we have Austin's renovated 2005 Durango. That thing is absolutely amazing. Gorgeous. He did a great job. So if you missed that video with the detailed walkthrough with him, check that out. We're going to play that next. Hey guys, it's Mallory here with the Camping Corner. So I'm here today with Austin who renovated this 2005 Durango for us. So we're going to kind of just talk through it and kind of what was your inspiration to want to do this? Sure. My inspiration was probably the flipping nomad Courtney. Um, she has been doing this for numerous years. I've been watching her for about a year now and uh, really wanted to get into the game too along with her and just kind of fill that void out here in eastern, the eastern part of the country because you know she's out in Idaho and we don't really see a whole lot of this here in Indiana so I just wanted to bring that to our market and kind of see what people think about that and kind of get started. Which is awesome. You did a great job. Thank so you. what is your favorite thing on the coach that you did? My favorite thing, there's a lot of a lot of favorite things in this coach that I did that I wanted to put in that I've always wanted to do in a renovation. So the biggest thing is probably the backsplash over here in the kitchen. Um, just with the, how large the kitchen space is over there, it really tied the whole coach together with the grays and the grout. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just really, really cool. Really inexpensive if you're wanting to do in your own coach. Not a lot of people think about that. So that's a really cool feature that you can do in your own coach. Um, I actually got those from Amazon and just applied with some adhesive in the back. They already came with adhesive on the, the back side, so, but I applied some extra. So it's, it's a great, really cool thing to do. It is. You did a beautiful job taking this 2005 coach and kind of bringing it in to what's current, what's fresh today. So you had a lot, how long did it take you to do all this? A couple months. We started in the beginning of December, so roughly under three months. Um, we got the idea probably five to seven months ago. Did not anticipate that it would take that long. Mm -hmm. But um, once you start gutting everything and doing the amount of work that you wanted to, it takes a lot longer and any project always takes longer than you expect. So right. keeping it under the three months mark is uh, definitely reasonable, I think, for this project. Yeah. No, you did great. Hey guys, our next segment, Gadget Corner. Now we need our hand model 
to hand us some stuff. All right. So we have some levelers. These are really cool, guys, because you can actually drive up on these to level. So they're a little bit different than your standard yellow wheel chocks wheel chocks yes thank you that you just stick directly by the tires this you can actually drive up on to help level so they do two a couple different things they act as a wheel chalk and you can level your coach with them so super easy to, mm -hmm. to take with you uh, they're lightweight anything like that don't leave them at the campground put yourself a note someplace because I promise you you go, try to go back and find them if you leave the campground, they won't be there. You know, they, they also sell a larger one of those that you pull up on one tire and it lets you change the tire on the other. Really? Oh. Yeah, it's like a thicker version. Uh, I'll put a link in the video or show it in the video, but it's a large one. So if you have a flat on one side, you drive it up on that, it lifts the tire up enough that you can change the tire. That voice you hear, guys, is not a ghost. That is Dan, our producer, Slash who just gave model. us. And, oh, yeah, and he's our hand model. So there's some additional information that you just got. You think they could hear you? Yeah. Okay, perfect. <laughs> hey, thanks, Dan. Hey, the other thing is, in case we don't have to wait 176,219 days to get to camping season, that means the sun's coming out, it's getting hot, getting, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. So everybody's seen them, or if you're brand new to camping and you haven't, these are wheel covers. And one of the things that people don't realize is the UV rays from the sun wreak havoc on the tires of your camper. Yeah. People don't realize most people with an RV will never mile out their tire. Mm -hmm. They're going to age out be before that. Uh, and unfortunately, the UV rays are gonna, going to sun fade them. They're going to crack. They're mm -hmm. going to weather check, things like that. So this is just a set of uh, tire covers that you can put uh, over your wheels uh, and tires that will protect them and also keep dirt and dust if you put the pretty little armor all around the tire, make it look all shiny because everybody's got to keep their ride pimped. So you got to make sure you do all that stuff. But super cool. These look like diamond plates. So for the guy in, in you know, the, if, if it's the guys buying them, it's got a little meat, little uh, manly stuff to it. <laughs> Super cool. So check oh those out. Goodness. Love you, Tony. <laughs> Hand model. <laughs> Dan's playing all this today because our other producer, Ashley, is not in studio today. Nope. She's playing hooky. She's got better things to do than hang out with us. <laughs> Hi, Ashley. <laughs> All right, so next we've got industry news. We have got some really cool industry news. So everybody knows the most horrible thing to have happen to your camper, or one of the most horrible things that you could have happen to your camper is having a water leak in your camper. Mm -hmm. Water intrusion, we've all heard the story. Some of us have experienced it where you've actually got a soft floor mm -hmm. or a soft spot in the floor. Keystone RV has done something that's absolutely amazing and they've come out with a new high performance water resistant floor. So they're going to take out, they can't obviously guarantee that you're not going to have a leak, mm -hmm. but they came up with a floor that's water resistant that should eliminate the capabilities of having that water leak or if you have a plumbing leak or anything like that and ending up with a rotted out soft spot in your floor. My understanding is you're going to find that on Cougar, yep. Passport, mm -hmm. and Outback trailers. Mm -hmm. So check out a dealer uh, near you to take a, a look at some of that stuff that's coming. But super cool. And it just goes to show, guys, the industry is always changing and trying to come up with something that betters your camping, camping experience. Right. Yep. Super cool. Super neat. All right, guys. I think that brings us to the end of uh, episode Eight. Eight? Mm -hmm. So that's super cool. And uh, thanks for joining us, guys. And we'll see you guys soon. See you next time. Bye-bye.